Aye, right, troops. Koala here. Fast movers inbound. Bra 2-1-0. For 13 at Angels 10 flanking. You are cleared hot. Over. Roger. Talig 2 bandits. Flanking right at 10 miles. Fox 1. Fox 1. While many of you will have understood some or all of what was just said, and many more of you will not. Most of that exchange was given in what's known as brevity codes, of which there are many, like bandit for enemy contacts, or bingo when you're out of fuel, and of course the ones you're all probably here for, Fox 1, 2 and 3. Missile types, target information, and often entire engagements can be spoken using code words like these, and given that you're all definitely getting involved in air-to-air -air combat on a daily basis, uh, you'd better pay attention today. Well, welcome back to the ArmorCast channel, where in today's episode of Koala Explains, we're going over missile types and defining some of the common codes and air combat terminology you need to know. Before we go into missile types and active combat terms, uh, let's go over some of the basics. So first, bogey, bandit and hostile. Now these are all terms for aircraft contacts and they all mean different things. A bogey is an unidentified contact. It might be an enemy, but it also might be a friendly aircraft, a neutral asset, say from another nation, or a civilian like an airliner. Okay, bogeys appear to be coming, uh, jinking to the right now, heading uh, north. Either way, you're almost never going to shoot at a bogey. Now if the bogey is moving suspiciously, like towards you at mark speeds, uh, then he's a fast mover, which means a jet, and he's a threat, but he is not yet a bandit or a hostile. A bandit is a confirmed enemy contact, but one that is not currently engaged with you or friendly units, and not breaching the rules of engagement for that theatre. So, Try not to shoot him, you might accidentally start World War 3, and that really doesn't look good on your resume. Now, if the bandit launches a weapon at you or friendly forces, or otherwise breaches the ROE, which do change for different theatres, then you can call him a hostile, which generally means that he can be shot at freely. Scramble is not referring to the pilot's breakfast, uh, but their need to take off as quickly as possible, whether it's to intercept an inbound hostile or support friendly forces who need you there five minutes ago. If you're scrambling, you're not holding by the tarmac waiting for further orders, uh, you line up and you go. Angels refers to your own or a target's altitude in thousands of feet above sea level, so Angels 3 means 3,000 feet, Angels 9, 9,000 feet, and Angels 85 means you'd better have a damn good oxygen supply. It's like a flight of two, Angels 10. Roger means you received the transmission loud and clear over your radio, and Wilco means you will comply with any orders or directives you were given in that transmission. This one is a bit of a formality though, if your commander orders you to engage a target and you respond with Roger moving to engage, I think they'll know what you mean. Bingo. This is one that is often used incorrectly, and it does not mean that you are out of fuel. Bingo means that you are low enough on fuel that you need to return to base now to be able to land with something left in the tank. If you're out of fuel, you probably should have called bingo about 15 minutes ago, but you've probably got more pressing problems to worry about now. And the last basic term to keep in mind, a bullseye, and again, don't you confuse this one. Bullseye doesn't mean that you hit the target and the boys need to shout you another round, unfortunately. A bullseye, or just bulls, is an established point in midair from which bearings and directions may be given. A bearings, by the way, are compass bearings, so 090 means 90 degrees or due east, 210 is southwest, etc. Now, using a bullseye means that both an AWACS aircraft, for example, and different squadrons of fighter pilots, all in different positions, can use the same bearings. For example, a target might be at a bearing of 350 from my position, so almost due north, uh, but 090 from my AWACS. Now, if the AWACS tells me that there's a target at 090 and I start looking to the east from my position, I'm not going to find them. If the bullseye is somewhere off to the west of me and south of the AWACS aircraft though, then the target can be at 060 from bulls, and we'll both understand what and where 060 means. We're attacking uh, AAA, 15 west of uh, bull. Uh, 
Bullseye doesn't have to be anything specific, it is an arbitrary point in the sky that is agreed upon before a mission and loaded into everyone's maps uh, so that all assets involved will know where the bullseye is, otherwise there's not much point. So now we get into the fun stuff, the weapons. Starting out with our air-to-air -air missiles. When you launch one of these, you'll give a call out Fox, either Fox 1, Fox 2, or Fox 3. And now these numbers are not you keeping track of how many missiles you've launched. Your first missile may, and in the modern day, usually will be a Fox 3. Uh, the Fox callouts refer to different types of air-to-air -air missiles using different guidance systems. Fox 1 refers to a semi-active radar homing missile, like the American AIM-7 Sparrow, uh, Russian R-27ER, or the British Skyflash. Fox 1! Fox 1! Oh, Jesus. Now, a semi-active radar homing missile is a radar homing missile that cannot guide itself. It communicates with the launch aircraft and follows its radar towards the target. As such, when you launch an AIM-7 Sparrow, you have to keep that radar contact locked. If you lose radar lock, that missile will fly off into the ether and self-destruct. The benefits of this kind of missile are that they can engage a target from any angle and at much greater ranges than our next kind, and can be terminated, say, if you lock the wrong target. So next, FOX-2 is for infrared-guided or heat-seeking missiles like AIM-9 Sidewinders, R-60s, Magics if you're French, etc. Now these are your weapon of choice for dogfighting. IR-guided missiles home in on the heat signature of the enemy aircraft, which means that at substantial ranges outside, say, a few miles, they're not going to be able to see anything to track. However, it should be noted that the Soviet Union made use of long-range heat-seeking variants of their FOX-1 missiles, uh, for example the R-27ET or the R-40T which the MiG-25 used. Uh, so these are infrared-guided variants of the standard radar homing uh, R-27s or R-40s. Now these deserve their own video though, so suffice it to say that outside of these examples, IR missiles are short-range missiles meant for close-in engagements and are typically much smaller and lighter than the larger FOX 1s or FOX 3s. Early heat seekers could only track a target from the rear where they could see, quote-unquote, the target's exhaust, uh, but more modern Sidewinders or R-73s can track targets from the front as well if the ranges are within a couple of miles. Because these missiles are fire and forget, a pilot can't control them after launch. So if you hear FOX 2, it means please don't get in front of me with your big juicy afterburner. There's nothing I can do to stop this thing from hitting you and friendly fire is just really embarrassing. FOX 2 type missiles can be filled with flares, which are magnesium strips that are dropped from pods and lit up to serve as infrared decoys. Uh, flares won't detonate a missile, however, like you see in some movies, so you still have to maneuver out of the way. Uh, one thing a surprising amount of people don't seem to realize is air-to-air -air missiles beyond the very earliest models like the AIM-4 Falcon uh, do not require direct hits. They have a proximity fuse that will detonate the missile near the target. Uh, so if you dump flares but just keep flying in a straight line, uh, you can still get hit. You're still pretty screwed. And FOX-3 is for missiles like the uh, AIM-120 AMRAMs or their Russian equivalent, the R-77, which are similar to FOX-1s, but these are active radar homing missiles, which means they have their own radar inside the missile. FOX-3 missiles still need to be guided most of the way in by the radar of the launch aircraft, just like FOX-1s, uh, but once they reach a certain range to the target in their terminal flight phase, which is called a uh, pitbull, uh, their own onboard radar can take over and they become fire and forget. Uh, Pitbull for the F-14 Tomcat's AIM-54 Phoenix missile, for example, was about 10 miles, but the missile itself could be launched from four times that quite comfortably. FOX-3 missiles like the AMRAM have pretty much replaced the older FOX-1 type in the modern day uh, ever since the Gulf War, as they allow the launch aircraft to, for one, simultaneously launch at multiple targets, and two, then turn away once the missiles hit their pit bull range. Of course, radar-guided missiles don't give a toss about flares, but chaff, which are clouds of metal strips that fool radars into losing luck, can help you there. Aside from air-to-air -air weapons, ground attack and anti-ship ordnance can also come with their own callouts. Pickle and Paveway are codewords for the dropping of unguided or guided bombs, respectively. 
the brevity code for launching an outer ground precision guided missile such as the AGM-65 Maverick is rifle while an anti-ship missile like an Exocet has the code Bruiser, and cruise missiles like the AGM-84 have the callout Greyhound. Some air-to-ground missiles like the AGM-45 Shrike or AGM-88 Harm will home in on the source of an enemy radar. These are called anti-radiation missiles or ARMS and are used against enemy radar installations or SAM systems most famously by the US Air Force's Wild Weasel aircraft tasked with the suppression of enemy air defense or SEED. The call out for launching an anti-radiation missile is Magnum. Magnum 6 Golf 100. Crack 3 Magnum 3 Tango. At one of the sickest sounding code words in my humble opinion is the call out for an inbound anti-ship missile, one that's been launched at your own friendly ships. Though it's probably the last one you ever want to hear. Vampire. Many of you will no doubt remember the trailer for the launch of the F-14 in DCS. When the uh, Backfire Bombers are launching their cage 22s you can hear. Oh, gives me chills. Ripple, by the way, is when several munitions are launched in rapid succession, all at the same target or group of targets. So in that clip you had Vampire Ripple Bearing 310, meaning multiple anti-ship missiles inbound from the Bearing 310 or Northwest. Alright, so now we get into some of our active combat talks. Uh, we're not going to be talking about fighter maneuvers here, that could be a video all of its own, or three, uh, but we do cover those kinds of things over on my other channel where we have a whole series of mock dogfight videos, you should come check out, link below. When a fighter pilot wants to request target information, they'll call out over the radio, bogey dope. This is asking the friendly AWACS aircraft to tell the pilot where radar contacts are in the area, and despite how it might sound, it doesn't just mean bogeys, but all non-friendly radar contacts. The AWACS, maybe an E-2 Hawkeye or E-3 Sentry, will then respond with a BRA callout, which you heard in the beginning of this video, at BRA or BRA standing for Bearing, Range and Altitude. Now that bearing and range might be either from the fighter, from the AWACS, or more helpfully from the bullseye if you're working with a bullseye in that mission. Altitude is obvious, either say Angels 10 or they may just say at 10,000, and sometimes there will be an aspect given too, so BRAA, and that will be hot if the target has their nose towards you, cold if they're facing away from you, and flanking if they are travelling perpendicularly. And keep in mind the difference between bearing and heading. Bearing is the direction to the target from your position, while heading is the direction you or the target are facing and or travelling. So you can be put on a heading towards a bullseye, but a bullseye does not have a heading, because it's not moving. Uh, there are several callouts or codes that refer to contacts, be they bogeys, bandits, or hostiles. A contact, by the way, meaning a radar return, not the entry into a dogfight, which is called the merge. Tally means you have the contacts within visual range. Raygun means you are locking them up on your radar. And nails, spike, or body spike means they have you on theirs. Uh, the callout nails means you are being detected by another aircraft's radar while spike means that that radar has locked you up as a target. Now, if a friendly aircraft some miles away calls out Raygun, and all of a sudden my fighter's radar warning receiver starts lighting up and bleeping that I've been locked, I will call out Buddy Spike, which tells my friendly that it's me they've got on their radar screen. I'll then give a heading and altitude, which the friendly aircraft can check against their radar contact they've just locked to make sure they don't launch a missile at the wrong target. If I'm being locked by a ground radar, on the other hand, the callout is mud rather than spike, and I'll then give a bearing to that ground radar for the sake of other friendly assets. That F-16 pilot was shot down, by the way. That's terrifying. If you say mud, your commander may tell you to break or scram. Pilot one, break left. Now, break means to perform a max performance turn, turn as sharply as possible. 
uh, perhaps because a missile has been launched at you. Scram, on the other hand, simply means do what you gotta do to get the hell out of there and you'll be given a bearing to scram too. Okay, so you know your missile types, you've followed the correct directions, and your targets are right in front of you. Now, it's time to fire. Well, actually, first of all, you should never say fire in an aircraft. If launching a missile, you say fox or any of the other weapons callouts, and if you're shooting your gun, you'll say guns. Uh, that term used to be fox 4, but that is no longer used. Saying fire, on the other hand, gives the impression that somebody is on fire, uh, which is going to cause some unnecessary panic. Though it usually tends to be worse in a civilian aircraft. You also most likely need to wait for permission to fire, wait, and may be told to continue dry, which means to hold your current course, but do not release a weapon until given clearance to do so. Uh, perhaps because it's unclear if there are still friendlies in that area, or you're in an airspace where you do not have authorization to act. Another callout, which means the same thing, will be weapons hold. Close out, uh, warning yellow, weapons hold, I repeat, warning yellow, weapons hold, Alpha Bravo out. Now, the brevity code cleared hot means you are free to engage your target, and you may also hear the callout weapons tight or weapons free. The first of those means that you are cleared to engage all confirmed enemy contacts, bandits included. If combat breaks out, they are guilty by association and can be declared hostile. Weapons free, on the other hand, gives you license to engage anything that is not a friendly target. Doesn't matter what it is, if it's not friendly forces and you can kill it, you kill it. When you do, splash is the callout for enemy targets destroyed, and at the end of the engagement you'll be told to cease fire or hold fire, at which point you are not cleared to engage at any more targets or launch any more weapons. Hold fire also means that any weapons in flight already that can be terminated, such as AIM-7 Sparrows or AIM-54 Phoenixes before pitbull range, should be terminated immediately if possible. This might be because you're straying into another nation's border, and uh, killing your target in someone else's airspace can get you into big trouble with daddy United Nations. When all is said and done, you'll be told to return to home plate, which is your base or aircraft carrier. Right, well done pilot, you've graduated the Armorcast school of uh, air combat terminology, so now let's revisit that opening clip. Fast movers inbound, bra 210, for 13 at Angels 10 flanking, you are cleared hot, over. Roger, tally two bandits, flanking right, uh, 10 miles, box one, box one. Type in the comments below, what does that coded gibberish translate to? If you get it wrong, well, you're spiked and uh, I'm ready to fox three. Well that's it for this video, these were just some of the most important, most common of the dozens of NATO standard brevity codes, and uh, before you ask, I'm not aware of any Chinese or Russian equivalent systems. But if you're flying around with some friends in DCS, now you can talk the talk and hopefully walk the walk too. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that if you did, you leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the skies. Thank you to all our supporters on Patreon for making this video possible, with a special thanks to Mo, Ian Anderson, Universe, Dean Winger, Tsukoshi Tiger, Captain Fubar, Dragon of the West, and Dagger68. If you like this video, I hope you subscribe and check out our other content, and if you really like what we do here, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. And thanks for watching. Carrying capacity was up to four 500 pound Mark 82 bombs and a single Mark 83 on the center pylon, but the OV-10 could also carry FFAR or Zuni rocket pods and the option of a 20mm cannon, the same gun pod used by the A4 Skyhawk. If that weren't enough, the US Marine Corps variant even mounted sidewinders. Because of that, where would you even put this vehicle?